Hola y para vida. My name is Lizzie Smith, and last semester I had the pleasure of living and studying in the beautiful and complex country of Costa Rica for a total of five months. That's me in the middle, with my host mother and sister, who I'll explain more about later. As a senior at UNC Chapel Hill, majoring in Global Studies in Spanish, you would think that I would have known a lot about Costa Rica before I went there. The truth is that I had learned next to nothing about Costa Rica before my time abroad, and every day I was surprised by what I saw and experienced. That's Costa Rica. It's a small country about the size of West Virginia, located south of Nicaragua and north of Panama. Although I had the opportunity to travel all over the country, I spent most of my time here, in Adadia, a small city located outside of San Jose. I also had the opportunity to travel here, on the Caribbean coast, to the Limon province, here, to Monteverde, and all over the Pacific coast, here. Now I want each of you to take a minute to think about what you think Costa Rica is. Do you think it's urban or rural? Scenic or developed? Well, the truth is that Costa Rica is a mix of all of these things, which I'll explain here later in the voice thread. Most people I talk to ask me how often I got to go to the beach. Maybe you thought of places like this. Beautiful beaches with white sand, blue water, and clear skies without all the development that we see in the United States. It is true that there are places like this in Costa Rica. This is a picture of Puerto Viejo, a beach located on the Caribbean coast. However, the culture and history of this area is a little more complex than you might have thought, and we'll be talking more about that here in just a little bit. But I bet that when you thought of Costa Rica, you didn't think of Quakers. This is the picture of the Monteverde Cheese Factory, located in Monteverde, Costa Rica, which I showed you earlier on the map. The town of Monteverde was founded by a group of Quakers from the southern part of the United States who didn't want to get involved in the World Wars at the time. This is where I stayed my first week that I was in Costa Rica. The town is small, scenic, with beautiful mountain views and dirt roads. Is this what you think a typical Costa Rican town would look like? I know that's what I thought, and although there are many small towns in Costa Rica, the majority of the population lives in the developed and busy Valle Central, or Central Valley. This picture is a view from an airplane of the Central Valley, and you can see how many people live here. Imagine how surprised I was when I learned that I would be living here to go to school during my study abroad. These are the host parents I lived with in the Central Valley. Rather than a small house in the mountains like in Monteverde, I lived in an upper middle class neighborhood next to the university. Costa Ricans like to consider themselves a fair and equal country, and although it has problems in poverty, all of my study abroad companions and I lived in upper middle class houses with internet access and running water, very similar to what we have in the United States. Did you know that Costa Rica has a female president? Not even the United States has been able to manage that one yet. This is Laura Chinchilla, the president of Costa Rica. And although she is a woman, she is also known for her very conservative politics. However, Costa Ricans are generally very proud of the fact that they have a woman as their president. And you thought only the Wild West had cowboys. The province of Guanacaste has a slightly different culture than the Central Valley. Guanacaste is located on the northern Pacific coast of Costa Rica. The food there is slightly different. In my house, we ate a lot of rice and beans. Here, there's a lot more corn tortillas and the food is heartier, partially due to its history as a cattle raising area. This is an example of Guanacaste cowboys. They have their own typical music and dress as well. The Caribbean coast of Costa Rica has a slightly different culture as well. Here in the Limon province, that, which is the province on the entire Caribbean coast of Costa Rica, there is a vibrant Afro-Caribbean scene, as you can see in this picture. Here the food is slightly different, and the natives speak more English as well. However, the history of this group is complex. They were originally brought to Costa Rica to work on the banana and pineapple plantations, and racism, unfortunately, is still very common in Costa Rica.
Banana and pineapple plantations still exist in Costa Rica, and their products are exported by companies like Dole and Chiquita to the United States and other parts of the world. However, exploitation is always very common. The work is dangerous. People frequently get cut with machetes and are exploited by these large international companies. Additionally, especially pineapple farming, is connected with huge amounts of chemical usage and environmental degradation, something which I didn't know before I went to Costa Rica. It makes you think every time you go to the grocery store now, huh? In Costa Rica, I had the opportunity to take a social history class of the country. In the middle of this picture, right here, is our professor, Carlos Naranjo. Here I am, right here in the end, and this class was where I got the opportunity to learn the history of this country, to match up and expand upon the experiences that I had. Costa Rica is a rich country full of complexities, and the longer I stayed there, the more I didn't understand why we don't talk about it more in the United States. It didn't receive the same sort of violence of the conquistadores like Mexico, or the same violent civil wars as Nicaragua and Panama. Maybe that's the reason why we pay it less attention. But really, all I'm trying to say is it's quite a lovely, interesting, and complex place. And I encourage each of you to try and learn more about it. Hasta luego!